in this installment on our journey toward learning software architecture, we're going to talk about modularity, what it is and how we can actually measure it, not just throw it around like a word like, yeah, I designed modular code. It's going to be more about what does it mean for a system to be modular? What are the characteristics of modularity and how can we actually measure that and start to take it a little more seriously as something that's more than just something we throw on our resume. I write really good modular code for Arcanium. Welcome to a production by Dr. Miles Aaron. CEO and co-founder at Arcanium Ventures. Don't forget to subscribe. 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 So what is a module? Basically, you're, it's a grouping. I mean, there's, there's not really a super technical definition here. It might be a, that a module is a grouping of code into a folder that can be imported by other areas of code. You might go more technical and say that um, it's a number of individual components that when grouped together can be reused um, in a way where you don't have to rebuild those individual components. In general, modules are individual um, groupings of code that can be reused to develop more complex structures. So for example, um, you know, I'm a musician, so I like to think in terms of music when I can. So let's imagine that, you know, every, we have our chord module and we have our, um, you know, melody module and we have our rhythm modules and we can pass some inputs to each of those and, and get something, something back, some rhythm, some chords, some melody. And so we pass those parameters and, and we are able to then um, have something that aggregates the outputs from all three and get a song. And so the song is the more complex structure we built from those simple reusable components um, that we call modules. And so as we get into measuring modularity, there are two things we must discuss. Um, there's cohesion and there's uh, connaissance. And both come together to form an idea of coupling. Um, and so we'll talk about coupling more, but first let's dive into what cohesion is and how it can be used to measure this idea of modularity or how, how modular is something that we're working with. So Larry Constantine defines this really well, and he says that attempting to divide a cohesive module would only result in increased coupling and decreased readability. And so we will get more into coupling later, but it's obvious that this is not what you want. Generally, you want things to be decoupled so that they're easy to change and easy to use without breaking something else. And you want them to be readable. So um, Larry Constantine basically sets this up as cohesion being a good thing, something that you should strive for in your architecture. And so there are kind of different levels of cohesion. The first and most ideal is functional cohesion, where basically everything in the module relies on everything else. And so the whole thing is um, uh, has high cohesion, right? And then as you bring the cohesion down, you'll see that maybe some elements rely on the others and some, some don't. Um, eventually you get into things like temporal cohesion, like for example, uh, when you're booting up a system and there's a bunch of code you have to run right in the beginning, those things may be kind of unrelated to each other, um, but because they need to be there before the system starts, they have this cohesion. You can also have logical cohesion. So you can say, hey, all these things are related to, you know, um, to, to marking attendance for a classroom um, in our ed tech program. So let's throw them all together in a module. And that creates cohesion um, because of their, their um, logical considerations that are related. This is a lesser form of cohesion, but it's one that you see used a lot. And that brings us to the worst type of cohesion, which is just coincidental, which is that no one really planned this. This isn't really good architecture. Um, but that you have a module of things that have been thrown together that are all coupled to each other in various ways. Um, and it's more or less coincidence or accident. And most likely that's going to be an area for refactor. So I'll include a link to the definition of um, LCOM or this 
lack of cohesion in methods um, formula. I'm not going to go too much into detail because I don't think it's particularly useful, but I do think it's important to know about it and to, to understand the concept of cohesion. And basically what this is, is a measure of um, how many of the things in a module are relying on the other things in the, in the module. So it's, it's a measurement of that cohesion between the different things that have been grouped together. Specifically, LCOM talks about the sharing of fields. So um, when you have you know, say a set of functions within a module, do they all share the same fields? And if they all share the same fields, then you are very, very cohesive. Um, but if none of them share the same fields, then th that module could be broken up and decoupled out into separate modules. So um, there are packages out there that can automatically um, do a decent job of measuring LCOM um, in your code base. And I do recommend um, if you're interested in installing one of those, trying it and just seeing, you know, how cohesive are my modules um, and what kind of LCOM score am I getting it might help you identify some areas that, you know, maybe at some level you knew were pain or they were difficult to maintain um, and, and may help bring to light um, other areas that you haven't been paying attention to in the code base that could use improvement. Video production by Brian Harris. Music by Young Logos and Otis McDonald. Sponsored by Arcanium.